All right, friends. It's dinner time. Yes. And I don't think anybody in the city, in the suburbs, in any of the neighborhoods has it better than we do right now because we have Chef Sarah Stegner joining us from Prairie Grass Cafe in Northbrook. Chef, how are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me here. I requested that you bring your guitar. Did you bring your guitar? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> See, boys, did you know that we have a class classically trained uh, guitarist right here? Oh, really? Was that the uh, first dream before? Yeah, uh, it was uh, a long time ago, a long time ago. Do you still play? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit? Much. Um, I'm sorry to go straight to this because I want to talk plenty about Prairie Grass Cafe, but any children by any chance? I have one daughter. She's 12. And is she into music? She plays viola. Oh, oh wow. wonderful. <laughs> and uh, have have you shared uh, your love of cooking with her other than just cooking for her? I should say, it, does she share your love of cooking? You know, she's more interested in the dynamics of how the restaurant runs than nice. she is the kitchen. So I think she's going to be a front of the house person. That is, I'm glad you said that because would you agree? You've worked in so many great restaurants, obviously. Well, not really too many. That's the kind of the beauty about your career is a lot of people bounce all around. But uh, I've been known plenty of people. My uh, my brother in law is a chef, and that's the hardest part, is it not? The business side of it. I mean, you can everybody can be not everybody can be, but there are so many talented chefs. But really making it work and navigating the whole system, the process, and making sure you stay open. That, to me, just from afar, seems like it would be the greatest challenge. It, it, the definitely, challenge. it definitely has been a big challenge. I mean, um, you work in a kitchen six days a week, six yeah. nights. You're working, you know, 14, 16 hours a day. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you look up and you're responsible for a business on top of it. <laughs> right. And just trying to figure that all out along the way. It's been challenging. Is that yeah. usually the natural progression? You become the chef and then the owner? Or do people just buy restaurants that's, that's, just to be the chef? That's the dream, to be the chef, and then you want to be the owner. Okay. Yeah. How did you find out how to run the business part of a restaurant? Because obviously best. you started off as a chef, uh -huh. but from there, how did you find Was it a lot of trial and error with running your own restaurant? Well, you, the you don't get too many times for the trial and error yeah. part. <laughs> um, I have a partner. His name is George Mimbaras. He is also a chef, okay. but he has a background in construction, so he had some business sense, thank gosh, one of us did, <laughs> going into it. And uh, the two of us make a pretty good team. Good. Uh, good. How critical was it your, the time you spent at the Ritz-Carlton? Very. I, I have to imagine that that would kind of like uh, getting, this is not even close to a good enough example, but me getting golf lessons from Tiger Woods from the time I was a child. That's that's the kind of level of expertise and uh, yes. perfection. Yes. You know, um, the U.S. just won the U.S. Focus Door, you know, the, the um, big competition in Europe. And when I was at the Ritz-Carlton, George Bambaras was the U.S. representative. And I represented... Um, the Tet and Jay competition, the U.S. So, yes, it's that kind of level. And mm -hmm. the training, I was with Fernand Gutierrez, a French chef, and he did a beautiful job um, there. And I, I loved working there. French and Friends here on 1590 WCGO. We're so pleased to have Chef Sarah Stegner in studio with us at Prairie Grass Cafe, 601 Skokie Boulevard, Boulevard in Northbrook, uh, prairiegrasscafe.com. Something else I uh, wanted to ask you uh, also, 12 years now in business? 12 years in business. Wow. Going strong. Getting Good. better every year. Nice. And have you always been focused on healthy eating? Because unfortunately for us as a people, a nation, healthy eating is, I don't want to say, rel it is kind of relatively new on the scene is in terms of it's almost trendy to eat healthy, which is almost, it's, yeah, it's it really kind of bizarre to think that way because we should be doing that, um, you know, and not just relying on our mothers to make sure we eat well. Right. <laughs> well, I always, you know, have a, had a, have have had a passion for good quality product mm -hmm. and for great vegetables. So um, for me, um, for me, it was it was a natural progression, mm -hmm. and it's always been reflected in my menu. Yeah. Kevin? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, no, I'm, I'm, I thought one of you. Well, guys, that's you what know, I really you know, like about the menu too. Is you have a lot of different options. So uh, is breakfast served all day? Because it, it, you've got a couple omelets that are even in the specialties. We have brunch on Saturdays and Sundays. Uh -huh. And that's something that we did at the Ritz. So it was a, it's, yeah. it was a natural thing to carry it over. And I really enjoy it. I'm yeah, sorry. So. I, I missed my cue to ask a question. I was busy staring at this delicious food right here <laughs> that we have in front of us. Uh, where do you get your ingredients? You, do you get it locally? Yeah, uh, we try to source as much as we can locally. Um, I use two farmer's markets. One is Green City Market, mm -hmm. and I'm one of the founders of uh, the market. It's been there for 17 years. It has 50 farmers that are all third-party certified. Wait, is Green City the one in uh, Lincoln Park? The Green, Green City is nice. in Lincoln Park, and in the winter, it's in the Notabart Nature Museum. Love that place. Okay, and it's every other Saturday. So um, I, I shop 
and purchase from a lot of those farmers there. Okay. I also uh, have a connection to the Evanston Farmers Market. Mm -hmm. It's the Evanston um, Community Indoor Farmers Market at uh, Manuel Lutheran Church. And that has 15 farmers, so it's a little smaller. They have great product right now with a lot of greens. There is a kitchen there, so you can go and have breakfast. Mm -hmm. And I sell uh, soups and stocks and muffins and cookies and, and that's the best thing milk. And <laughs> that's the best thing to have during the winter, too. And that's, that's what I really like about uh, going to the farmer's markets is because it's always something that's in season. So your menu changes changes with the seasons as well. And uh, that's uh, what I really like about your menu now is this just a snapshot of what's there now. Uh, right. But you, exactly. you have different things throughout the year. So do you have anything that's uh, specifically fall or summer that you that you do seasonally? Yes. Yeah, you, you called it right there. My menu is driven by the season. And when I walk through the farmer's market, I'm looking to see what, what's available and what I'm going to put on my menu. Okay. So that's kind of where the, people always ask, where's your inspiration from? That's where it's from, the local product. Okay. Can, can you tell us as consumers, uh, you know, when I, not, not knowing what is really in season, I just go to a grocery store and I see an avocado without a care for the month that it is and wondering, wait a minute, what had to happen for this avocado to actually get grown and delivered <laughs> to me right now? Right. Uh, you know, how can we educate ourselves in that manner to know that we're getting fresher food and staying away from things that might not be frankly you know preserved uh, right. that we don't need that this right. stuff in our body i think i i for a chef the best way to do it is to have the relationship with the farmers mm -hmm. but what's great about both of these two farmers markets is you can have it too nope. you can have that relationship directly with the farmer and to go to those markets and make the time to talk to the people that you're buying from and ask them what are they doing now? Because a lot of them are starting to pick the seeds. Mm -hmm. And that's a time when I would meet with a farmer, too, mm -hmm. and say, you know, will you grow this for me? And uh, I want this for the fall. But i got to tell them now yeah. what, what they, what, so they can plan. Because these are the people that literally before you buy it from them, they just grabbed it right out of the dirt and washed it. Mm -hmm. Maybe washed it off for you, but either <laughs> either way, uh, they're the people that are that are intimate with these uh, the, these products right. and this produce uh, because that's that's what you need, and and that's what I really like about. Just look at over this menu is is great uh, because I see so many things that are so fresh and lively. It's it's not that weighing down McDonald's greasiness right. or anything. Like yeah. Everything's fresh and crisp. When, you know, at, like you said, mm -hmm. um, healthy is now more yeah. ac acceptable. But like mm -hmm. 10 years ago, I wouldn't have come on here and said, oh, let's talk about healthy eating. Mm -hmm. Because it, it would have been a turnoff. But now people are really looking for it. Especially and, in this area. Right. And what I, what I brought in is something that I would choose to eat. I want it to be delicious. I want it to have mm -hmm. texture. I want it to have some freshness to it. Um, the f I want to eat enough. I don't want to be hungry. Uh, the sustainable seafood, which is the wild striped bass, it has local apples, and the pea shoots are from Three Sisters Garden, mm -hmm. and then a really good flavored vinaigrette. So when you eat it, you shouldn't even know that you're eating healthy. You should just <laughs> enjoy the flavor. Absolutely. But if you wanted to, you could look at the menu and pick things that you'd have choices because there are different options on my menu, and mm -hmm. all of them you know, have that element to it. Uh, boys, did you know that uh, Chef Stegner here is a two-time James Award, James Beard Award winner? Whoa, I really? do believe that. I Thank believe you. Okay. Yeah, I say that. Uh, <laughs> we have done something remarkable, and I know we are not alone in the nation, uh, but we are so conscious of trying to make sure that all of our children eat well, regardless of where they are. So for all the faults that we may have in Chicago, and I would argue that they're far fewer than we tend to complain about, what, what uh, makes you happy in completing that mission to make sure that kids from all over are not going to some of the places that we've mentioned here, you know, that are just eating healthy? Yeah, that, thank you for asking that. Um, I started a program with a woman named Diane Schmidt. It's mm -hmm. called Healthy Fair for Kids. Ah. And it is asking chefs to put one healthy item on their menu. So many restaurants have these gorgeous menus, and then the kids' menu is hot dogs and hamburgers. Yeah, and yeah. that needs to change. Mm -hmm. And If you put healthy food in front of a kid and it tastes good, mm -hmm. they're going to like it. For sure. You know, nine times out of ten, they're going to say, okay, and I, when I put whitefish on my kids' menu and it sold and I got positive feedback, I was like, see, that proves it right there. Mm -hmm. It works. Hey, I, I'm glad you mentioned whitefish. Uh, 
am I sh should I be more wary than I admit that I am about you know buying some fish that I should know they're not pulling it out of Lake Michigan? I mean, it, it, would it be better for me in terms of freshness and, and healthiness to uh, be looking for things like whitefish that I know can be sourced locally instead of let's say you know tuna, which, which is a long way away from where we would pull it out they of the water. do but they do a really good job of getting the they fish do. here and keeping it fresh what you want to look for with okay. fish is that it's sustainable that it's they're not damaging the ecosystem they're making sure that you're going to have that fish for future generations so i'd say whole foods does a pretty good job of uh -huh. it you know we buy direct from the fish houses but there are um like marine certified and we use sustainable seafood. Well, I'm, I'm glad you answered my question that I really have very little to worry about for the most part. And so did that's this, good. this bass come from a fishery as well? This is wild. Oh, this, this is wild. wild. Okay, wow. And it's been harvested correctly so that there was no damage to the environment. That's okay, great. I think Mike uh, indicated we should probably take a break right here. We were okay. speaking with Chef Sarah Stegner, Prairie Grass Cafe. Uh, we're going to talk plenty more here. French and Friends, 1590 WCGO. Good? Okay. Uh, kick it back over. Go ahead. Yeah. Three, two, one. Yeah, we're still rolling. All right. French and Friends here at 1590 WCGO. We are talking about Prairie Grass Cafe in Northbrook. We have Chef Sarah Stegner joining us in studio today. Uh, PrairieGrassCafe.com. Uh, what are we, something that I noticed here, and maybe it's just I'm not as sophisticated, but I think that uh, we, we as, a, as a people are not worried about whether we're right or wrong anymore, you, you know, when we go into a restaurant. Uh, just little things like combining my fruits and greens. I, that was something that's relatively new to me. My wife made a uh, chicken salad the other day and then uh, sliced grapes and put in there. The, combining things that, that I, had, I had no idea these could go together really make for an amazing profile of many of these dishes that you do, I believe. Uh, absolutely. I, I like to, you know, you, you want to try to pick things from the same season if you can. Okay. Okay, so like the apples are in season here, and pomegranates are not local, but they are in season right now. Okay. So it adds a nice crunch to it and gives it some some pizzazz, that kind of thing. Uh, where, do, where do we get pomegranate from? Grocery store. Oh, I, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are they made in the States? Is this overseas? Of course. Yeah. They're, they're are they made? Are they, they grow? It's California. Yeah. Okay, California. Well, see, I'm learning, and I'm not embarrassed to be embarrassed. All right? And, and that's what you can tell for, for like a good chef. Uh, is not just about food and blending. It's about the texture as well. Like you were saying, with the crunch and uh, and having those different flavors almost pop at you as you're going. Because essentially what we're doing is we're listening to a dish with our mouth. I mean, that's that's the only way that I could really describe it. Uh, uh, and to get that sense and get the full senses, uh, it's it's really amazing. Do you, do you try a different thing? What does your laboratory look like? Yeah. You know, um, I worked with a holistic nutrition consultant um, when when I was losing weight. I, I lost seventy pounds. Wow! Good and uh, she awesome. said she has a mantra that she says, uh, "Hit a protein and something live." Her name is Carol Wagner. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But that um, helped me clarify. It was kind of like what I was working on, where I would do a dish that has you know, protein and then a vegetable and then something crunchy with it. Mm -hmm. And what, what I didn't really realize that that was so important to when you eat to have that part that's something live there. So what we call like that crunchiness or the mouthfeel or what you were mm -hmm. talking about is also really good for you. Okay. All right. You guys keep talking. I'm going to dig into this real quick. This, <laughs> this looks, you know, it just looks good. There's so many different colors. Uh, between the pomegranate seeds and the apple and the, the greens, cabbage. it just yeah. it looks yeah, fun. Hey, what you got? No, hang on one second. I'm getting there. Boy, that is amazing looking. <laughs> okay, I noticed something, Chef, that every chef has uh, more regularly than we would we would think. Oh yeah, a little cut there. I sure but, did. Yeah, but well, it happens. Um, one thing, my wife, uh, we got her actually a decent knife for once for Christmas. Good, uh, good <laughs> move there. I, I had no idea. It's like the difference between driving a Hyundai and a Mercedes-Benz. Absolutely. Um, what are some of the things we could do at home to make our cooking experience better like that, you know, like buying quality that's going to last you forever in terms of your, your tools? Right. Okay, so things that make life easier. Yes. When, when you go to the farmer's market or to the grocery store, you need to be open-minded. You can have, you know, I'm going to have a salad and I'm going to have a vegetable and uh -huh. I'm going to have a protein. But you need to buy what's in season and what looks best, you know, what smells best, that kind of thing. So you got to go there open-minded. 
People that go with a recipe that's written, you're in trouble already. <laughs> you, you have to buy what's in season, not try and dictate it the other way. Um, and good equipment at home is great. That always helps. Having a really sharp knife mm -hmm. or a serrated knife, okay. like trying to cut a piece of bread and you don't have a serrated <laughs> knife. No. You're practically just squishing it at that point. Yeah, all, the, all those <laughs> things make a difference. And then before you start cooking, you want all your mise en place, your ingredients, everything laid out and, and ready to go. You don't want to prep it as you're going. Yeah. It's too difficult. And people, you know, okay, first, it's not your job, it's not your career to be a cook. So you have to make this as easy as possible on yourself. Mm -hmm. And to have everything set up and laid out for you before you start is key. One of the reasons I think we went to prepared meals or dining out a lot was exactly what you said, especially now that it's, it's, almost, it's, it's ubiquitous. Both parents, if there are both parents in the home, are working, so it's harder. So you could, would you recommend even like night before kind of thing or days where you could prep things uh, that will keep so that maybe, you know, this is for you know, Sunday night maybe. This is for Monday and Tuesday. We'll go ahead and do the prep work, and then it's, it's going to save us a lot of time. Yeah, you know, one of the things that really sold well for me at the Evanston Farmer's Market this, yes. uh, this, pa this past time was I did a salad very similar to this, and I julienned, cut nice even strips of the celery root, I shaved the cabbage, I shaved the Brussels sprouts, and had them ready to go mm -hmm. for people. And then I, I put it together with the vinaigrette. That sold out like in the first half hour. Mm -hmm. Because I think you, just what you're saying, that it's that extra time and effort that mm -hmm. it takes. Now, if you don't have me to do that for you, mm -hmm. then yes, the night before, cutting the celery root, just wrapping it up in a, in a damp paper towel, keeping it fresh. Those those kinds of things help. But but Sarah, we always have you to do. Better we you just do. Come to the grass. grass. Uh, <laughs> you better call her chef in here you, while I'm on the mic. I, I apologize, <laughs> chef. I apologize. But uh, but uh, how long have you been in Northbrook? Has like the change well, around you? Uh, Twelve years of being there. Um, uh, has the area kind of changed around? Have you kicked all of the uh, the bad food out of the uh, out of the area? Well, there's no bad food in Northbrook. <laughs> so we we are surrounded by five different communities, mm -hmm. and that kind of all come to Prairie Grass. So it's okay. Northbrook and Glencoe and Northfield, and you know. All, all the outlying areas. I, I'm sure, I'm sorry to interrupt, I'm sure that you like many different kinds of food, but if you had to pick one, uh, and, you know, uh, French cuisine, Mexican, uh, well, what's your favorite? If you had to, like from to, other kinds of food. Other kind, I like Mexican food. I do too. <laughs> the real stuff. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about this food. Uh, clearly, I'm not much of a salad guy, oh but this gosh, salad is delicious. Uh, I know half the deal with food is just the presentation, how it looks. This looks delicious. It's colorful. Uh, it's got a lot going on. What exactly am I eating here? You are eating celery root that okay. is from Nichols Farm, and the red cabbage is from Nichols Farm. The pea shoots are from Three Sisters Garden. Mm. And then I have a little bit of Brussels sprouts. I have some pumpkin mm -hmm. seeds. I have pomegranates. I have a caper dressing on it. Oh. And the apples are from Ellis Farm. It's so good. Oh, ugly <laughs> mouthful. Okay. And I, you know, I, I noticed I was try I was making a lot of my vinaigrettes sweet with mm -hmm. honey, mm -hmm. and this one doesn't have any any sweetness in it. Oh, yeah. It's just caper and mustard and grapeseed oil, and cider vinegar, which actually isn't sweet. And um, I, I like that. I like that to because people tend to make their yeah. dressings really sweet. And it's yeah. a it's a beautiful comp uh, compliment to the apples. And then you throw that earthy tone of the nuts in there, and it's it's right yeah. on the money. It's, it's absolutely things. amazing. When you uh, when you add, like we were talking about earlier, but nuts in one is great. Mm -hmm. Okay, you see that young man right there in the Run DMC T-shirt? Mm -hmm. Hi. Uh, I would say just we, we don't dine often. We should go. We should eat more together. But I think he has a pretty. I don't want to say limited. I'm trying to think of the right word here. Legit. <laughs> Sure. Uh, I don't think he's much of, uh, of of an explorer yet in terms of his, his culinary desires. What would you say to people who feel like uh, they know what they like and they're a little scared to try some things? Because, n I mean, none of this is, is off the wall, uh, for instance. But what would I say to my friend Mike there when I want him to try something new? Please. Well, I mean, I think prairie grass, it has, it has obviously, it has more than just fish. So we have a marinated skirt steak that's really popular. Um, our fillets and sirloins are all natural, prime, and people come just for the steaks. They really like that. Mm -hmm. Our chicken um, is chicken is one of the most popular items that we have there. It's completely boned out, and the skin is really crispy. And it's right now it's served with wild rice that has roasted grapes and pine nuts in it, 
and it has a acorn squash that has uh, a brown sugar glaze on it and a really good chicken sauce with it. So uh, I think Mike would try elements. that. I think yeah. he would. We're speaking with Chef Sarah Stegner of Prairie Grass Cafe in Northbrook. That's 601 Skokie Boulevard. Uh, Sarah's also the founder of Green City Market in Lincoln Park and many other markets you're involved with, right? One here in Evanston again? Yes, the Evanston Community Indoor Market. Now, while we're talking about markets and farmers, um, I see obviously more and more people using city urban space uh, to grow. Uh, I'd, I'd love to see us do more progressive things like, you know, keep some of the, use the water uh, from the rainwater. I wish we would do a more, a better job of that. And then rooftop uh, gardens. Is that, could, would that adversely affect some of the people that you do business with right now? Or is, I guess what I'm asking is, do you support more urban uh, Absolutely. gardening? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I support urban agriculture. Um, in fact, we have uh, a teaching garden in um, Lincoln Park that is an edible garden where kids come through mm -hmm. and really we we do a lot of seminars Jeannie Nolan is uh, the, the gardener and she does a lot of seminars about how to farm on your balcony cool mm -hmm. the people that are gonna garden they're the people that are gonna be interested in eating the right foods mm -hmm. and they're gonna pay attention to where the food is coming from and that goes back to having kids eat healthy because I find if the kids are more involved in the process of cooking the food or they know where the food's coming from and growing the food they tend to be more apt to eating vegetables and things like that you're right you're right rule, rule with kids is get them involved and put it in front of them if Absolutely. you don't put the vegetables in front of them they are never going to eat them so we were, we're talking vegetables but my favorite is the proteins i absolutely <laughs> love them like this fish so right here this fish is delicious thank you yes uh the thing i'd oh, like good. to talk to you about is uh your number one sirloin burger that yeah. thing sounds yeah, amazing so, <laughs> so for everybody out there are you ready for this chicago magazine's number one sirloin burger Mild Amish blue cheese topping, warm beef steak tomato, grilled onions, crisp potato wedges, and the surprise, without a bun. Huh. Why without a bun? Well, because we put we put a little balsamic on the... Uh, mm -hmm. We have a half a beef steak tomato that's uh -huh. grilled with a little balsamic on it, and the juices from the burger run, and the balsamic runs, and the juices oh. from the tomatoes... And it, and it oh, is you don't to even die for one. delicious. Oh, it's really gosh. good. And on, on Wednesdays, this oh. is like our, we kind of don't talk about it too much, but <laughs> you guys twisted my arm here. Yep. On Wednesdays, you can come and get a burger half off if you buy a beverage. Whoa. Ooh. Hey. Hey. Come uh, on. That's my uh, favorite kind of slider, burger. Slider half Wednesdays. We do, that's you it. Know, 300 people on Wednesdays and... 298 of them are burgers. Uh, and if you're asking where that where is, if you're just joining us, that is at Prairie Grass Cafe, 601 Skokie Boulevard in Northbrook. Sarah Stegner, Chef Sarah Stegner, is our guest. So, obviously, you spend a lot of time in the kitchen cooking these kind of things, the things you know how to cook, but, I don't know, with a lot of professions, there's uh, a continuing education kind of aspect to it. So how do you find the time to kind of get in the kitchen like a mad scientist and come up with some different recipes? Well, you know, it's a continual learning curve. I I find that um, my inspiration is from the market. Mm -hmm. And when I come across something that, you know, I'm either tired of doing it one way or another, I will uh, research how to how to how to prepare mm -hmm. it differently you know either on the internet i talk to my friend chef chefs mm -hmm. or i'll see something at a restaurant and think wow i wonder how they did that you know that, that kind of thing but it's it you are always learning with food you never stop mm -hmm. and any chef that says oh i got this all done they ain't telling you the truth it's continual this might be a weird question but do you like go home and watch the food network uh, do you no. watch cooking shows no i find That's it very us. very stressful <laughs> really yeah i don't watch the food network you guys oh. watch it i'm not watching no, no, my, uh, that is one thing my wife and i watch a lot okay w w so we can see you tomorrow at the evanston community indoor farmers market emmanuel luther luther Go ahead. Lutheran Take two. Church. Yes. Uh, the problem is I'm a Baptist, and that was you, a bad word. You when I will see it. my. You will see my product there. Okay. Okay. I got brunch to do. I'll be at the restaurant. Okay. <laughs> One last question because I think we need to wrap it up. Uh, do you see many people using the napkin like Jackie Gleason here? <laughs> sure. I sure. Mean, look at this. This is this <laughs> is. Nice. I just got this hoodie for Christmas <laughs> right here. You know, my wife would kill me if I got a stain on it. There you go. All right, so much more we could uh, talk about. But what we want to tell you, if you haven't been, many people have, and they will swear by it. They will testify 
under oath that Prairie Grass Cafe is a wonderful place. Chef Sarah Stegner has been our guest. Thank you so much. I've truly Thank enjoyed you. it. Thank you. Me too. More French and Friends here. Boys, anything else? Are we good? No, no. I just want to dig into the rest of this okay. fish right here. This French. bass is phenomenal. Set my calendar for next Wednesday. That's right. it. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Chef. <laughs> Thank you. More French and Friends after this. Thank you, guys. That was awesome. Go ahead and stop the recording. Oh, that was great.